My name's Ed Piscor. I'm Jim Rugg. We're going to be talking about a legendary one, man. G.I. Joe, your book number two, drawn by Michael Goldman, but first some business. Octobriana, 1976, world's first blacklight comic, is in comic book stores everywhere, printed with this cool fluorescent ink, kind of a one-of-a-kind one printed matter piece. You will want this for your collection. I advise picking it up when you see it because it is selling well. We're almost out of them at the publisher level. And you can pick up the process zine, 350-page detail account of how I made this thing at my website, jimrug.com. Patreon.com slash Ed Piscor. I'm serializing the Red Room comic strip up there. Got more than 50 pages online as of this recording. New pages every Tuesday. Three bucks gets you the complete archive, and the first issue is almost all uh, completely up there. So get your hands on that if you're an early adopter and can't wait till the paper edition comes out next year. But task at hand, the Michael Golden story, triple play uh, in G.I. Joe yearbook number two, which is a legendary comic story if you've ever read any interviews with your favorite image uh, founders or the second generation image studio people like a J. Scott Campbell, like a Dan Fraga, those guys all talk about G.I. Joe, your book number two, Michael Golden as being like a pinnacle. And a lot of people like, you know, it's hard to, to, to figure out like, okay, like what's the legendary comic by this person? I think we interview and talk to uh, a lot of those guys, those old timers. They're going to say that this is the this is the issue to get, man. It's not the nom, it's not micro knots. It's this story right here where where Golden is going for it. That's an interesting. Uh, I was going to ask you about sort of your favorite Golden because he does have a, a pretty long career and he has different styles throughout that career. Mine is the nom. The twelve issues of the nom to me are like perfect because he also colors that stuff. He, and he might color this as well. There's no credits in in this book. Oh, weird! I didn't realize that. Yeah, and so I'm going to assume that it is Larry Hama that's writing this thing, and Larry Hama did write by the artist in that it is just a schmoz. <laughs> you want to know the story? Here's the story: October Guard has a laser weapon. Cobra steals the laser weapon. The October Guard steals it back, and the entire time the Joes are watching while this is all going down, and they end up stealing the the uh, the laser guns. So there is your there's your triple play, <laughs> but this is about the artwork, right? You know what I mean? It's just it's action figures banging into one another. Um, it's amazing character designs. It's that mixture of like cartoony and action that you rarely get to see like look at that kind of stuff you mentioned j scott campbell and i feel like that's that's the ingredient for him you know like he has that art adams this cartoony version element in his work that i always loved you know that cartooniness is a thing that it does animate these characters you know it does sort of especially gi joe it's perfect for it so glad to see that part uh you know you pull that out right away and you mentioned action figures. I think of toys when I think of this story. Like totally. it feels like all the GI Joe toys that were uh, available at that time were sent to Michael Golden to use as reference to plug in there. Like, like let's see some of these toys on display. Some of these tanks and planes and helicopters. Never drawn better. And when you would see these kinds of vehicles and the Hiss tanks and stuff being used in in the in the regular series, uh, very rigid, very stiff maybe even tracing from photographs, but there is life to these vehicles. It almost feels like Big Daddy Roth fucking G.I. Joe trucks. That's funny. You know, there's angles to them. There's squash and stretch. You could feel the physics on those tires right there. Yeah, it, it feels animated. Like, this is a certain... Uh, <laughs> it, it, it feels like the catalog for all the G.I. Joe stuff that you want. It also is like just looks very hard to draw like super rigorous it's interesting that he's able to do things like this kind of facial expression that's so expressive and looks great next to the kind of thing of like these vehicles bouncing around long shots composed together like they are very different very different skill sets i'm using some different methods and materials for firefly here some zips Man, it highlights what a weird property G.I. Joe is. You think of the various iconic G.I. Joe comics, and it's they're all over the map. Like they have a lot more highlights than than you would expect from a toy license. I'm I'm a big fan. Like like I, I have all but the last issue, and I had a it's the comic that I had a subscription to growing up. 
and uh, towards the end, I was just grabbing them off the rack at the grocery store, and the last issue was in such uh, a small print run that I just never saw it on the rack. So what I'm saying is if anybody has a beat-up copy... <laughs> You know, or you a near mint copy. Yeah, you could, could send it in a slab. We we obviously know how to unslab a uh, <laughs> CGC comic. But here we go, like with some more of that, the physics at play with these vehicles. It's hard enough just drawing a fucking his tank. I always love that his tank design. Yeah. But you are right about it. Is hard, that is a hard thing to draw and make look right. It's kind of the reverse of the hot rod with the front end up. Right. And look, look at the like the perspective on the tires with these like little treads in perspective. This is a guy who isn't faking, which I think is clear. Again, you know, like you look at his career and it's like he's good and all, you know, and his style evolves. But the part of being noteworthy, like you will find people that are champions of each of those different eras of Michael Golden for a reason. Yeah, it's not like he had to figure out a stylistic gimmick to get over. And see, this is the Joes, like in their kind of uh, covert gear just just uh like a watch to the watcher just hanging back observing watching watching the mutual enemies the mutual destruction of their enemies the the only thing that stinks is like october guard is so boring to me we grew up in this 80s cold war stuff and we saw it on tv and it was like enough enough it is disturbing like you you know you're looking at the map there and it's like afghanistan is still a theater of battle right Man. The precision of these drawings, like the backdrop that we have here is the uh, IDW Artist Edition. Uh, and you don't get the, the artist editions that you get with these like kind of like loose leaf pages. It's all legendary comics. Here we get to see the air battles. Unfreaking believable. For, for as influential as it was and how often cited it is by the image guys, uh, it's like, we'll take as much from this as possible, but no vehicles. Like, uh, there will be no vehicles in our uh, comics. That paper looks like better than your newsprint grade paper. It feels like yeah. the color is much more saturated, like it's sitting on top a little bit. Yeah, for sure. For sure. It does make you wonder about the colorist. This stuff's unbelievable. You know, like I'm I'm watching this on screen as you're flipping and you can see like it's such a shape. You know, like there's such a volume that's communicated in that drawing. That's a hard thing to, to do well. Yeah. There's a reason the image guys aren't taking that <laughs> that part of it. He's so good, man. And he and he's a guy who plays with methods and materials as well. Like he he did some amazing gi joe covers that are very painterly and look like animation cells and i remember asking him about them and he was like son i was adobe photoshop before there was adobe photoshop because he was playing with color holds and doing all kinds of weird stuff yeah i mean when i ask you you know about like favorite time periods or whatever i think about his covers a lot because mm -hmm. he was doing punisher covers for a while whenever i was reading those off the stands and they would always be the super saturated colors. Yeah, a lot of hundred percent magenta on those colors. Just striking, you know, like really striking is when you think of covers as needing to pop. I think he was a kind of an art director for Marvel for for a while, like for these kinds of like reasons for for the dynamics of what he what he brings to the table. Unbelievable drawing. Yeah, I know colorists who cite him in his cover work. And, and, you know, I mean, he's not known, he, he's not a colorist, even though he does color some, quite a bit of his work, uh, pretty, pretty high compliment whenever a colorist cites a guy who, you know, coloring is part of what he does, but not his main thing. Yeah, like, we'll crack open those NOM issues at some point, and you take a look at the color in there, it's like, it would not work yeah. if he wasn't coloring that stuff. Yeah, when you see some of these, like, the double lighting or the highlights and, and some of the stuff, it does make me wonder if he's coloring this. Yeah. Because it's pretty thoughtful. You could see you could see uh, the Art Adams Wolverine I was as a descendant say, in that face. A lot of Todd McFarlane in, in that face, yeah. too. Those eyebrows. Exquisite ships. Like, we're talking the, the yellow rapidograph is being used there. <laughs> 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 and then here we have the Joes. Getting a drop on everybody. 
and leaving with their little laser weapon. There are several of these panels where like a like a vehicle is partially shown, you know, cropped off or whatever, and they always stand out to me as being exceptional. Like that, that's great. That looks great for a panel. Great little comic. Uh, it's you know, gonna win zero awards for uh, for best writing or anything like that. But you don't you don't get somebody with Michael Golden's drawing ability on a G.I. Joe comic to have them sitting around uh, doing uh, My Dinner with Andre. Yes, very true. There's probably quite a few more of these uh, like big-time artists who come on a book where everybody could learn from this. Yeah. Like, like we want the A game. Give us the sizzle here. Like, and show then, off a little bit. And and the thing with the G.I. Joe yearbook, they don't bury the lead. Uh, it... It recaps all the stuff that you missed if you didn't uh, if you didn't get those earlier issues shown off the covers shown off like I know a couple of dudes who were the product of divorce man and their daddy their daddy <laughs> hooked them up with that man for several reasons one it was super expensive mom wasn't going to afford it two that's going to your mom's house man she's going to have to see that <laughs> shit every day <laughs> that's what I thought of when I saw it is that would be the worst I'd be so mad if I had a kid that had something that size cluttering up the house oh yeah <laughs> <laughs> That's the size of a small bed. It's about seven feet long. The covers, Mike Zek covers. Anyhow, man, what we're really here for? Oh, how about this? There was the uh, Rob Liefeld New Mutants cover that we were looking at. Yeah, in for a... a minute I thought that was Cable holding up the gun. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. And I think you made note that uh, the bullets look quite like uh, Crayola crayons. <laughs> Yeah, that's a weird coincidence. A weird real life coincidence. <laughs> and uh an October Guard pinup. I also really liked the uh Michael Golden uh signature. But I always I, I just would just be like, I'll take your word for it that that says golden. Yeah. I could kind of see a G, I could see an L, it's an O. Too clever by half. Yeah. <laughs> Anyhow, man. Get yourself the G.I. Joe yearbook number two. It's still affordable, but probably not for long after this video goes out there. Uh, if you're ambitious, you got a couple extra dollars, get the G.I. Joe yearbook number two IDW artist edition. It really shows off the lot, the, the golden artwork. It really shines. It's, it's a pretty nice artist edition for that reason. You get to see, uh, it is kind of like image, uh, you know, year zero or something, Michael Golden, especially this time period. You see all of that fine attention to the line work. K Favors, like, follow, subscribe to the YouTube channel. Hit the bell, we'll notify you when the next videos are available. Octobrian is in comic shops right at this minute, but it might not be for long because those babies are leaving the stands quick. Uh, Patreon.com slash Ed for the serialized Red Room comic strips. Those links are in the description directly below this video. You can subscribe to the Cartoonist Kayfabe e-newsletter at the links below this video to keep up with everything we're doing. You can find Cartoonist Kayfabe t-shirts and merchandise at the links below this video. Jimmy, give them the margin orders, dude. Read more comics.